All right, I'm gonna start my update video number two. A couple things since last time. I'll just talk about it first. Uh, it's all road legal and stuff now. It's insured and uh, titled in my name. I got the tags and everything for it. So that's a big plus. Did a couple things up here in the cab. This uh, this nut right here, or hand nut or whatever for the tilting steering wheel was uh, really seized up. I broke that free, cleaned it up. I pulled the dash off, straightened this out. Tried to troubleshoot this to see if it was a loose connection. Wasn't that. While I had it off, I pulled this knob and then sprayed all the linkage between this and the accelerator and then down into the cable and it helped free it up a little bit. Mounted a RAM mount for my phone. Tucked the uh, CTIS wire away since uh, it's not working on anything. Pulled the cover because it was all jacked up off that side. Just gonna have it open for a storage. And you can see in there too, the lock and everything that was left, I cut the old lock off and through the old school way of putting the wire around the steering wheel to lock it up if I ever need to go to the store and leave it. Loosened up all the adjustments for the center seat here. It slides back and forth. Took off the bracket for the fire extinguisher over here because uh, it was all bent and I didn't know what size fire extinguisher. I'm gonna replace it with something else eventually. Decided to put my reg up there so it was easier to see. I got that replacement sprayer in. It fits, but it's not the right one. It actually has four different sprayers on it. So the top sprayers end up just making a mess and spraying fluid all over the place. So one of the guys on the Facebook group for the LMTVs um, said he had a truck he was parting out and he pulled them off and he's just gonna give me a coat to ship them to me and I'll pay him a few extra bucks because I cannot find that part anywhere. Also found this wire cut off and tucked away. I'm gonna guess that has something to do with that other wire that's been identified as the troop alarm in the back, but I'll figure that one out at a later date. I found this piece in the cab when I was cleaning it out. I have no idea what it's for. I mean, it's clearly a military truck part because it's painted uh, karka green. Just not sure what exactly what it's for. Cab air springs. I uh, kind of fought with these a little bit since my last video. They were left in a deflated position. Um, wasn't sure why and I realized it in the valve that's over on the other side of the truck. I'm on the driver's side right now. Here it is. See, it just says cab, push and turn. When you push it in and turn it to the right, it locks it and that opens the valve to send air to the cab air springs. Well, whether it was because it was sitting like that for a while or they just went bad, uh, both of them were leaking pretty good, but I figured, hey, maybe they'll do something with at least some air going to them. Wasn't the case because the air supply lines are so small. It was just bleeding all off. And it also caused a problem with the radiator fan, which you can't really see, clutch not disengaging properly. So it was like half-assed, engaged all the time, and it was robbing power from the engine and then running the... Uh, fan when it didn't need to run even if the engine wasn't that warm which on a diesel isn't that good especially if you're in a cold environment so i found that leaving the airbags deflated got rid of the problem and i'm waiting for black friday to see if midwest military equipment puts their upgraded replacement on these uh, up for sale they're much cheaper than the military part number and it sources parts that are more common and readily available and they make a nice bracket for it all to go with it's not as protected as this with the metal around it but i think it'll do fine truck's obviously usable without them but it definitely is clanky driving down the road i'll have a video driving down the road later and you can kind of hear it clanking around i also got the replacement bottle to put on uh, it's going to be one of the first things i do start by getting the cab out of the way um, since the air over hydraulics isn't working you move that and then there's a breaker bar in here I'm gonna use this to just hand pump and then as you're pumping it up you won't be able to see in the video you want to make sure that that cab locking nipple comes out as you're picking it up Exciting. That was a workout. 
Everything's nice and clean under here. Gives us room to change the bottle up. It's a 7 16 wrench for the little clamp that holds the actual bottle on. And then it's like a 5 16 but I just take the bit off the screwdriver to loosen the hose clamps and then use a screwdriver because who knows how long those have been on there for. Try to wrestle them off. All right, this is the back side of the old bottle. It has two barb fittings. The new bottle has a barb and then a like hydraulic JIC fitting. Could just remove this and take this fitting off and put it on there, but since this is already sealed well, I by chance had this fitting that threads on the way it needs to that has a barb, so I'm just gonna install that. All right, you can actually see these windows. And I dumped the whole, just about a whole gallon in there. I'm not sure how low the truck's gonna be and I used green, because I'm not sure what type is in here. And originally they put green antifreeze and then they switched over to the new orange cat stuff, which is what I'm gonna put in when I flush it. So we'll fire it up, let it run for a little bit, and then take her for a ride. Take a little rip into town, get her nice and hot, see if uh, it pulls or adds to that degas bottle that we just replaced and uh, make a couple stops while we're at it. placement was successful it does have a slightly different shape than the old one as well even these fittings are in different spots but it seems to do the trick I salvaged some of the parts off the old coolant overflow bottle in case I needed to use them on something else or if say this window goes bad again on that one doubt it will and I'm gonna save the old bottle too because I might be able to use that as like a small fuel tank of some sort if I ever need it in the future for some other project. I realized after getting the grill off, it seems like from this little plastic cap right here is where that antifreeze leak is coming from up front. I thought it was coming from just the hose clamp, but it's coming down the cap and dripping off. We got the grill off. Had to drill it out pretty good. What it ended up being, it was actually a rounded nut. It was uh, one of the riv nuts. And somebody, that bolt that was put in from the front actually was the wrong thread. And they tried to cross thread it and then that made it loose. My buddy Hunter helped me with it and drilled it out and we got it off. And I'm going to paint that. And then while it's off, I'm going to paint all under here so it matches what I fixed up there. I'm going to paint the whole grill black but I painted the Kark tan over the Stuart and Stevensons. 
logo. I don't know if it's going to look good or not, but I'm going to give it a try. And I already repainted the little number holder here, too. Got the grill back on. I'm not sure what I think of it black. I saw one picture and I thought I liked it. I don't know if I do. So I'll leave it that way for a while. And uh could always just paint back over it if I don't like it. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this video. Next update probably won't be for a while. I'm going to do all my fluids changes and stuff. And uh, there's some other videos out there showing how to do that stuff. I be middle of November after I get the parts I need. I'll make the next update.